Okay guys, so this is going to be the first episode of a new series I'm starting called Bioactive Basics where we're going to be looking at the individual parts of a bioactive enclosure for your reptile or amphibian and sort of looking at how you can incorporate that into the enclosure and why you ought to. So we're going to be going from the bottom up and starting with the drainage layer. Now we install drainage layers for a number of reasons. Firstly, so that the substrate doesn't become saturated with water, which could cause the plants to drown. Um, also so that the substrate doesn't become anaerobic and stagnant, in which case it would smell really bad and it could be quite dangerous. And also to provide different humidity levels throughout the substrate as in nature. So where water builds up in the drainage layer, it's more humid near the bottom, but then it's drier on the surface. So the actual drainage layer itself has got to be made of something that will allow water to be held within it or otherwise it just wouldn't serve its purpose as a drainage layer. So what people tend to use are expanded clay balls which go under the names of hydro balls, lecker, hydro drain, all sorts of names for it but it's all just expanded clay pebbles. Uh, pea gravel or it seems to be common in America to use a false bottom made with plastic egg crating. So you will notice that in my setups I have chosen to use the expanded clay balls. This is because with them being a sort of more uniform spherical shape, they do allow better drainage than pea gravel where the grains can be of different sizes. And compared to a false bottom, it does provide more surface area, which is important for allowing microfauna to grow, which are essential to the system and I will be talking about in a future video. So of course it is imperative that the substrate does not mix into the drainage layer because otherwise it's just going to be substrate all the way down with some bits in it. So what we use here is called the separation layer. So the separation layer has got to be made of something that allows roots to pass into it so that the plants can access the water down there and actually of course lets water through it but like I've said does not let the substrate through. So a popular one to use is aluminium mesh and some people do use window screen or weed block although personally I've heard some bad reports using these so what I like to use is Lucky Reptile Hydro Fleece which is really quite cheap for what it is. The only con is that obviously it looks white but basically it's just an ideal thing and it works well for me. The separation layer should be laid across the drainage layer after it's been set in and then the substrate should be put on top of that. So you might be thinking what is going to happen if the water level in the drainage layer gets so high that it reaches the substrate and that is an absolutely very good point to make because that can happen and obviously if it does happen it's just as bad as not having a drainage layer at all if not worse because it means that there's going to be a sudden influx of loads of water into the bottom of the substrate but there are a few steps that you need to take in order to stop that from happening. So what I like to do is use a turkey baster just to press it down this corner here and then I squeeze it and it lets me suck the water up and I can get it out. What some people do is they install a bulkhead into the bottom of the vivarium which lets them drain it as and when they want to. And some people do install a little bit of PVC piping in the corner and then if you have one inside of that and you have some holes in it, I'll put up a picture right now. But as you can see, that will allow you to easily just siphon off the water. Any of these methods work well, but it's basically just important to ensure that the water level in the drainage layer doesn't sort of get more than halfway up so that the substrate doesn't become saturated. So that is it for the first episode of Bioactive Basics. I really do hope that it's helped you out and next week we will be going into substrate in a bioactive enclosure which is one of the most important parts of getting the bioactive system off to a good start. So I hope that you did enjoy this video and I'll see you in a few weeks for episode 2. Bye guys!